Um, first thing, Chuck. Um, all right. Why, why are you in your Why are you in your car? People are. Um, yes, I'd like to explain that. Right now, I'm sitting on 70th, 70th Street in um, in New York City, right up the street from Hospital of Special Surgery. Uh, my wife was scheduled for rotator cuff surgery, which got moved up to today, unfortunately, and we couldn't postpone that. So I had to drop her off. Um, we're not allowed to actually be in the building because of all the COVID restrictions. So I am uh, in the car waiting for her to recover and uh, ready to uh, do my part as far as the uh, damn presentation for today. So we were joking around that we're, we're wondering if someone is going to bother Chuck while he's in his car so we can all stand by and see what see if that happens. So there's, there's been a lot there's been a lot of activity so it wouldn't surprise me to see somebody walk up to the window and say something. So uh, we'll work that in as we have to. So what we're going to do today is there's like a six minute video. Don't worry we're not going to watch a full six minutes all in a row. I went and Chuck and I went and looked at an actual dam. We're gonna watch the video. I'm gonna stop it every couple minutes. You guys can ask questions and Chuck can catch us up on where we are at. I have a lot of things to play around with here. So a lot of devices. So let's get started for the, which is maybe about a minute and a half, two minutes. Chuck, um, I'm not an engineer, but this doesn't look correct to me no this is obviously a problem um, what this, what you're looking at right now is an outlet structure for um, one of the lakes in the community that also serves as the stormwater management facility and um, as you can see right now it's in a severe state of uh, of, of decay and um, it's uh, extremely compromised so am I guessing right that this is an indicator of the biggest problem here? Yes, and quite honestly, it started out as those small areas that we looked at in the other examples, and this is what happens as time goes on. So it's obviously imperative to uh, have this uh, taken care of as soon as possible. Um, my guess would be that you could just fill that in with some dirt and it would be fixed. Actually, that is the worst thing that you can do in this particular <laughs> case. Um, what's going on right now is that there is a pipe that's approximately 100 feet long. It's uh, it's uh, directing the water out of the lake and it connects into a stream, which is about uh, uh, up to the north of us. And what's going on right now is that pipe is completely collapsed, which is allowing the the uh, the, the dirt and the aggregate uh, that you see no longer in that hole to escape. And in order, if you were basically to just fill that hole with dirt, all that would happen is the next time it rained, it would get washed out and become deeper. So we're going to take a look at that pipe, but. How come it doesn't look like it's collapsed here? It looks really kind of screwed up and we're gonna take a look at it, but I guess it could be collapsed somewhere else, right? Or there could be a hole in it? Basically, um, you really don't see these things from the, from, the, from the surface area of the pipe on the head walls because they're actually being supported by the concrete around it. So you're gonna see the same shape as you would normally. It will trick you into thinking it's okay when in fact a foot or two behind that wall is where the failure really starts to begin. So this is a case where things actually are a lot worse than they look, and they look pretty bad. They are bad. Uh, it is a lot worse, and the uh, you know the, the part that you need to be aware of here is that this happens um, in some cases very quickly. This decay underneath, especially a soil mat, or in other cases when you're outside in the roadways, asphalt is basically like a hole, like a cavern is creating underneath that you don't see, and it's literally like the Roadrunner cartoon where uh, he puts a rug over the top of it and then uh, somebody steps on it, there's nothing to support it and it literally falls in, um, you know, from that standpoint on. So is this considered a dam? Um, the, the entire structure is a dam. This is a component of the dam. And this is obviously the key portion of it, which uh, controls the water and, you know, in a safe fashion to make sure that uh, it's conveyed to the uh, stream without any problems. So what you're telling me then, so that, the the dam over there theoretically then could be not safe, right? It, correct. It isn't safe. Um, what happens next is that either the uh, either the water will get constricted to a point where it'll cause flooding upstream in the surrounding areas that it's supposed to protect, or worst case scenario is that the actual dam will collapse um, and the water will just basically flow straight through without any control and have uh, detrimental effects generally on the downstream uh, the areas. Okay, let's go down there and let's go take a look at the pipe. So real, um, so Chuck, uh, before we put a disclaimer, how ungraceful we end up going down there, which is pretty embarrassing. Um, that hole, which I kind of showed with a graphic, why don't you explain a little bit about how deep that hole was? Well, it was hard to see because there was some vegetation that had been grown and this was something that took place over, you know, a, you know, a long period of time, uh, especially for the seasonal growth. But that hole in and of itself was probably around three to four feet deep 
of in addition to the pipe depth. So from from the surface of where it would have uh, originally been before there was any damage down to the bottom of the pipe underneath was probably about six to seven feet. And um, how old is, is this basically is this setup that we're taking a look at here? Well, this particular uh, area was built in the um, in the early 70s. So it's probably between 50, 60 years old, depending on what phase of the project that this uh, this was actually completed. And from the outside, was the damage only limited to that depression from ground view? Uh, from ground view, yeah. I mean, there was some def there was some uh, 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 depressions taking place on the opposite side, but when you got down into that pipe uh, uh, area, you could really see the bottom was rotted out, and that's where you know the the problems all started. All right, so let's take a look at the actual what, what people can actually see down there. And once again, I apologize for for my ungracefulness. <laughs> So Chuck, we're, we're down by the pipe. So what are we looking at? Well, basically what you can see is that uh, this confirms what we were looking at up top, the failure of the pipe. Most prominent is the bottom invert of the pipe here. You can see it's been rotted out. Uh, it, it was a metal pipe and it's, it's basically decayed to the point where um, it's separated between the sides. And what that does is it basically takes away all the structural strength from the uh, pipe section itself, allows things to start um, uh, collapsing and falling downward. Uh, that's one of the problems. The second problem that you probably can't see because it's in a little farther is that these um, pipes are put together in sections and the joints will generally fail after time. And that's where the majority of the, uh, of the soil that you see is coming down through the top and getting carried away through the, uh, through the flow out of the lake. It looks like there used to be like a, another layer to this pipe and it looks like it's completely rotted away. Yeah, I think what you see in here is that there was probably an attempt to try to uh, try to put another plate on it to uh, gain a little bit of extra life. It really doesn't work very well. Um, it's not a uh, it's not a method that's used uh, very successfully. You could also see some remains of some uh, some tar that they had to use it to uh, to line it to try to uh, to try to preserve the pipe surface. But eventually. Um, you know, what we found over the years is that the, the, uh, the, the corrugated metal pipes are um, very susceptible to, uh, the, to, to failure. Um, but, you know, being replaced with uh, concrete pipes, a lot of the concrete pipes we find also fail relative to the joints uh, particularly. So Chuck, why don't you talk a little bit about this pipe? And I mean, you spoke about it in the video a little bit, but I don't, I don't know what you want to add, add, add to it. Um, yeah, I guess uh, we have different types of pipes that have been used over the years. Um, if you ever happen to be reading plans for your community, you'll probably see abbreviations. CMP is uh, what we use to designate corrugated metal pipe. That's what you see right there. Um, and basically, it's kind of like the corrugations you would see in a cardboard box. Uh, that's what gives it the strength to be able to, um, you know, initially hold the, um, the loads that it's subjected to. But what happens, as you can see, is as the water flows over the bottom of that pipe, which is the invert that I was talking about, um, it's susceptible to a lot of uh, rusting and rots out pretty quickly. Once the bottom gives way, then the strength of the pipe um, is basically compromised because it, re it relies on what's called hoop stress uh, uh, characteristics, which basically means that that round circle is kind of like working as a unit all the way around. Once the bottom is no longer there, it kind of just collapses. People are asking um, on a scale of one to ten, how how bad is this pipe? This one is uh, probably about a about a, about a nine to ten. It's, you know, you could when you when you actually have that bottom totally rotted out, so that the that the sections aren't con aren't connected anymore. It's 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 uh, it's pretty much done. There's really nothing left to it. And you had also mentioned to me at some point you had an opinion about these liners that people want to use on pipes, right? Yeah, um, the, there are liners that are used on pipes sometimes to rehabilitate them. Um, the first thing that I would say is they have to be used really pretty early in the process, like before you really even get any type of decay. It's almost like a maintenance plan as opposed to a remedy. Um, but in this particular case, liners really wouldn't be applicable because you could see that that corrugated shape really doesn't allow you to get a good adherence uh, that would provide any kind of structural strength or really, uh, really did, did be a void in between also too that would cause uh, issues with that. So generally it's the smooth bore pipes that you use the uh, liners for. All right, we've got about one more minute in this video where we just look a little bit at the concrete issues that were part of this problem. Talking about cracks earlier, I meant, is this an example? 
Yes, um, this is actually uh, further evidence of uh, what's going wrong with this particular head wall. Um, we talked about the pipe before. It basically needs to be in a full um, full section. There can't be any breaks in it in order for it to support it the weight it's, supposed, it's, it's intended to use. And what you see here is that because the pipe has basically separated down below, it's not able to support the weight of the concrete head wall itself. And um, basically this is failing just as well as the, uh, as the soil and pipe behind it. This is a different type of crack, um, but it's also severe and something that needs to be um, concerned uh, for the uh, for the property owner. Um, what we have here is a vertical crack in this head wall. It's basically caused uh, by the fact that the pipe is failing below. Um, it's not able to uh, hold the, st the uh, structural uh, integrity that it was intended to, and therefore the actual head wall above it is starting to fail and crack. So that, again, will need to be replaced as well as the rest of the system beyond it. Chuck, before we climb out of here, um, is there an issue over here also? Uh, yes, there is, as a matter of fact. Um, looking at the rest of the uh, structure, what I'm, uh, what I'm pointing to right now is basically the weir surface. And this is uh, typically underwater during high level conditions or when the water is discharging through uh, the uh, lake. We wouldn't be able to stand in here if it was working uh, you know, at full capacity. And you can see that the stones and the cement are very exposed. And what that's basically telling us is that um, over the years of uh, use and water flowing over here, the cement is starting to uh, uh, decay and, and basically wash away the cement in between the aggregate. You can also see the difference in water level between the um, tight uh, concrete that's been exposed only to the air and the stuff that's been uh, between water and air uh, you know, over the years. And uh, this is uh, in a situation where you really need to replace it before it starts to decay and, uh, again, compromise the, uh, the, the lake uh, holding back water. So, Chuck, um, that, that's it for the video. So I, I hope the sound was okay. If it wasn't, just send me a quick comment um, uh, if I need to lower it or, or make it higher. Um, Chuck, um, people are asking more than one, does it matter which direction cracks are, like vertical or... Um, I, not really. I mean, a lot of times you'll get different directional cracks depending on where it actually started to fail. Like in this particular case, that first crack that we looked at, that was right over the top of the center of the pipe. It was vertical just because that was the shortest distance between the two edges. Um, sometimes they'll come on 45 degree angles, um, but in general, they're, they're basically um, a function of the fact that the head wall itself is starting to displace. Um, in this case, the weight of the, uh, you know, with the, with the pipe not supporting it, the weight helped it, but also as this uh, soil starts to get uh, dragged away, it also starts to, um, you know, uh, eat away at the foundation underneath the uh, structures. And that's where you start to see those cracks that you're talking about. And when I looked at the cracks, they didn't look that bad to me. They're hard to see in the video, I realized for people, they were kind of fine cracks, but you, to you, you were very concerned about them. Well, yeah, that's the start of them. I mean, obviously, it took a little bit of time, it took quite some, you know, time, for example, to get that pipe to start to get to the point where it collapses. But once, you know, the uh, once the, the wheels are in motion, so to speak, of, of that kind of decay, it starts to unravel pretty quickly. So you could come back, you know, in a couple of months in another in another uh, portion of that is when you start to get the um, cold weather and the freeze, freeze and thaw cycles. Once the water gets in between those cracks and starts to, um, you know, push on them, it, it'll accelerate the uh, the damage and cause it to, you know, fail pretty quickly. Somebody's asking, um, they're saying their dam has the same kind of coloration. Is that something to be concerned about or is that normal? Um, it would depend on the coloration that they're talking about. Um, sometimes, um, you know, just the, just the wear and tear on it over the years, the concrete will start to turn like a darker gray color. Um, you could see the really uh, the real contrast between the uh, area that's been subjected to the water uh, up and down fluctuating where kind of where my hand is, is pointing. And that's really been just some area that's eroded away. So those those are when you really start to become uh, concerned about the color. So what's going to happen here? What's going to be the fix? Uh, the fix is to replace it. In this particular case, there's there's a number of things that were you know that are that are going wrong. You have the, uh, the the stones that are pretty much exposed, which are telling you that the actual surface is uh, you know in a, in a heavy you know in a, in a severe state of decay. You have the structural cracks that are around the uh, you know the, that we talked about before. So essentially, this uh, this whole structure has got to be taken out and um, and and re replaced with a new one. And um... What's what can the association or board expect during this process? How long is this going to take? This sounds like a pretty monstrous job here to remove this pipe. 
It is, um, you know, something like this for this particular one, and it's kind of large just to give a little bit of perspective. Uh, you could see that we were standing down into that head wall and, and, and outlet structure. So that, that thing was probably about 10 to 12 feet wide. The pipe itself was probably about three and a half feet high and four feet wide. It was an arch um, sh section in there. So something like that um, was probably going to take about a two to three month time frame from start to finish to complete the entire project. What kind of pipe are they going to replace that with? You said this pipe was how old? And then the second part of the question is, how, how has pipe technology changed? It has. Um, what you see there is corrugated metal pipe. It was used 50 years ago, um, probably about you know 30 or 40 years ago. They really stopped using it because it was uh, to a point where it was decaying. There were new materials that were being brought on. Um, reinforced concrete pipe, RCP, as you will see it, you know, initial or abbreviated on the plans. Um, was the next uh, generation of pipe and basically it's very heavy um, it lasts longer but it also eventually gets subjected to the same type of uh, situation where the bottoms will uh, get, get eroded out from just the water uh, scouring through it and the uh, joints it's usually about eight foot or so joints so it's very difficult to build um, the next uh, or the latest generation of pipe that we use a lot which is what we're going to use here for the replacement is um, plastic pipe, it's um, HDPE is the initials and it's high density polyethylene pipe. And that's basically got a lifespan of about hundred years when it's installed correctly. So um, in this particular case, we felt that this was the best um, fix. The, the sections are a lot longer because it's a lighter pipe. Um, it's easier to install. So it does, you know, uh, accelerate the process and get the, uh, get the job over with quicker. Um, people are asking how often should one of these dams be inspected? Um, the, the general rule of thumb, which is even dictated by the DEP, is yearly. You should have an annual inspection. And then, you know, if it, if it is an actual dam, it falls within the dam safety program. And there are criteria that you have to follow. There's, a, there's a informal inspections, formal inspections that take place uh, every so often, depending on what class your dam is, whether it's a low uh, hazard or a high hazard. So you really should physically take a look at it at least once a year to see how it's doing. And, um, you know, you may need to do some more in-depth inspections, um, you know, on, on a more uh, more spread out basis. Um, what difference would it have made, Chuck? Because like you said, it's a 50 year old pipe, right? So theoretically, um, what work could have been saved or not performed if different steps were taken? What, what can an associate learn from this? If, if you had a situation like this, this is obviously pretty difficult because it's an old technology and eventually you might want to replace it anyway. But for example, if you noticed that there was a section of the pipe that had started to decay, um, you could have potentially just removed that section and, and replaced it um, to allow for, you know, a little bit longer lifespan. But eventually, a, you know, a corrugated metal pipe like this, it's just going to fail along that whole edge. So it would be uh, pretty difficult to really save it. And I have to watch our time here, Chuck. But um, people are asking, and I knew this was going to come up. If 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 you if you want to share it, what's the estimated average cost of a project? You don't have to pick this one in particular, but something similar. Well, it, it really depends on the size of the pipe. I mean, in this particular case, we have a very large pipe. We talked about a very large outlet structure, um, which is uh, you know made of concrete in this particular case, as they mostly are. Um, this, this particular fix is going to be about $150,000. Um, if you have a smaller uh, pipe, obviously it's proportionally less, but they're, they're, uh, they're not um, small ticket items in general uh, terms. And um, from the audience also, are these the same, do the same principles apply to detention or retention ponds? Does it matter? Well, actually, this is, this is a retention pond by definition. Uh, so, you know, it's a lake that was there uh, that was actually created as part of this uh, development back when that was an allowable thing. But yeah, this is the same type of a situation that would occur in any type of detention or retention basin that's built under normal uh, development conditions. Um, do you mind communicating how big the lake is? We didn't we didn't get a picture of it. I, I realize this particular lake is probably i think it was at least a couple of acres um uh, i don't remember the exact size of it but it's probably at its at its width where we were we were down at the one end it was probably about two or three hundred feet wide and maybe a thousand feet long so it was a pretty sizable lake um believe it or not in this in this community there was many larger lakes it just happens to be one of the air one of the ones that was uh that we focused on that had the damage in this case uh, people are like screaming in the comments, reserves, reserves, reserves. 
Um, should this have been a reserve item? Well, it shouldn't. And one of the one of the interesting things we find when we look into a lot of the older reserve studies is that um, because these, I would imagine, because these uh, these facilities are off the beaten path, so to speak, and behind the development, usually um, many times they get overlooked, and we don't see that line item for storm drainage in the uh, reserves. So it is something that uh, that, that that the community should consider when they're um, when they're uh, putting putting together their funding. So Chuck, I, I appreciate you being with us today. I know you kind of had this thing come up last minute, and you had to set up your car and everything. Um, any 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 closing closing thoughts? I think we covered a lot, right? Well, yeah. I mean, again, I think that the, the big thing that we that we covered on was it, it don't um, you know don't overlook these things. This particular one basically really got far down the line and was eventually discovered by a couple of the residents who just happened to be walking by. Um, before we started working on the project with the with the community, so um, you know the the preventative uh, element of it is really important to make sure that you don't put yourself in a position where you're really in a, a hazardous situation. On top of the fact that you're now in an emergency situation, which always costs more to um, to to fund and rebuild. And then people are asking, too, Chuck, in this particular case, you're going to take the whole dam apart and replace the cement and the pipe and everything. But in other cases, um, sometimes it is possible just to put a new pipe in, correct? Yeah, if you if you catch it early enough, there are times where you could do some remedial work that would that would limit the amount of uh, damage and 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 you know keep that to uh, to a minimum. So it would be obviously more uh, financially beneficial. So um, no, I don't have any footage of tr uh, Chuck and I trying to get out of the hole, but we we did realize that it was a lot more difficult than getting into the hole. But we that we, that, that is that is true that it was. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for, for joining us, Chuck. Obviously, the audience, if you have any more questions, send them over to me. I'll send them over to Chuck, and I'm sure he'll be glad to get back to you. Chuck, good luck today. Have fun in the, have fun in the city. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Thank you very much, very much guys. Bye.